Measurement for the purpose of weight estimation of set gemstones is probably one of the most important tasks a valuer will perform. It is a task that is often done many times a day and requires the highest possible standard of accuracy. The incorrect estimation of a gemstone's weight can easily place the stone in an incorrect price bracket and result in an incorrect value being assigned. To make sure your measurements are correct, the accuracy of your gauge must be checked regularly and returned to zero before use. Do not use excessive pressure, as this can alter your readings by distorting the gauge. The responsibility for that accuracy is yours and not your gauges. To do this, you must check your gauge regularly against a piece of steel with known dimensions. Some valuers have had a steel block manufactured to an exact given measurement. NCJV state associations have a standard machined steel block to check a gauge's accuracy that measures 3 mm, 6 mm and 9 mm. These dimensions cover the majority of common measurements taken. But something of which you know the exact measurements will do almost as well and at a fraction of the cost of a precision machined test block. The simple act of engraving this measurement on the item will save any confusion. Be careful to always use magnification whilst measuring, even if you still have good, close vision. Use some form of three times magnification. Some people prefer these binocular magnifiers. Either way, you will need to be hands-free. The two styles of gauges that seem to cover all eventualities are the vernier and the leverage gauge. Neither are perfect in their own right, but the virtues of one compensate for the disadvantages of the other. It is important to apply these gauges to gem materials and jewellery with care, as in many cases the materials being measured are softer than the gauge. Treat all gauges with care and do not flick or snap them shut. Keep them in their own container, not loose in a drawer. The leverage gauge is best held with a thumb on the block and a finger curled around the dial. This allows a clear view of the dials, which, when the gauge is operated, can be clearly seen to be a large sweep hand with a smaller totalizer dial. The leverage gauge has a number of advantages. A large, easy to read dial that fits neatly into the palm of your hand, allowing single-handed operation. Care must be taken not to obscure the dial and be certain that you are not holding it in such a way as to restrict its freedom of movement. This section of the gauge is particularly useful for pearls and loose stones. This long end is particularly useful for the measurement of the depth of set stones. Care must be taken to ensure that whilst one side of the gauge is square on the table, the other is right on the culet and that no damage to the point of the culet results. The old saying, measure twice, cut once, can be adapted to this. Any anomalies that appear should be re-measured two or three times. With the use of the extension, the leverage is probably the only gauge capable of measuring accurately the depth of very small stones through the drill hole. The leverage gauge is also useful for the measurement of diameter on larger gemstones, where the claws are not too numerous and therefore not too close together. When this happens, it truly becomes a blunt instrument and can cause a huge error if you were to measure the distance across the claws instead of across the stone. The vernier gauge is more adaptable when it comes to measuring diameters, especially between claws. It is also the best gauge to estimate the dimensions of a stone in a rub-over setting. You must place the gauge over the setting and estimate the position of the girdle underneath the actual bezel. Careful observation of how much of the girdle facets are visible is a clear indication of the position of the girdle. This gauge can be locked and the dimension double checked, but it is a poor gauge for depth, being crude and limited. A digital model is being used for the purpose of this demonstration, as the readout is more convenient. However, with time, the traditional gauge can work just as well the fine points on the vernier gauge you should replace your gauge every two years at least. 
The vernier is also the easiest gauge to use under a low-powered microscope when measuring grain or channel set stones. Many people prefer to use a reticule, which is a small glass disc etched like a ruler in whole and part millimetres. This is placed in one eyepiece of the binocular microscope and measurements taken through the lens. This is a handheld magnifier with a reticule. A reticule in your microscope can be very helpful but does need to be calibrated. So if you are considering a reticule, please have it demonstrated before you buy it. Gems are rarely ever completely uniform. Diamond certificates normally give two dimensions for the diameter because even the most modern computer cut stones can vary and old cuts are often very odd in shape. At least two measurements of diameter are required for the accurate estimation of weight. We suggest that at least four be taken, noted down and the average is used for your calculation. As ever in valuing, take a mental step back and think, are these measurements looking right? Do they make sense? If one measurement seems to be an anomaly, take it again. In your notes on weight estimation, you will see that the various shapes have their own formula. To apply these correctly, a great deal of practice is required. Practicing with loose stones where your results can be easily checked on a scale is a great idea. Good luck and good measuring.